Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stav and this is She Equips Herself. And on this channel, if you've been here before, we usually talk about self-defense and concealed carry and stuff like that. But today we're gonna switch gears a little bit and I'm gonna talk to you guys about hunting. So I asked you guys on Instagram and on YouTube if you want me to do a video talking about hunting because if you follow me on Instagram, you might see my stories. It's deer season right now, so I'm hunting almost every day and I've been posting stuff and you guys have been asking me questions. So I figured it might be fun to do a video and I'll kind of explain to you guys why I hunt, how I hunt, and go into kind of all the little details about it. So if you don't follow me on Instagram already, get on there and follow me at She Equips Herself so that you can see my stories. I usually post on there when I'm up in the tree stand, you guys can see what I'm seeing and just kind of be there with me, it's kind of fun. Also, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe if the stuff on my channel seems like things that might interest you so that you don't miss any future videos. So with that said, let's get started with this video. Huh, there's a moose on my mug. the first time I ever killed anything. I was three years old and my family was living in Germany at the time because we lived there for a little bit when I was a kid. And I was riding my little tricycle around our apartment and a fly landed on one of the handlebars. And I don't know why I remember this, but I have a very vivid memory of me squishing the fly with my hand. And I know that that was the first time I ever intentionally killed anything. And if you know me, you know I'm a huge animal lover. I've always had pets. I have a dog now, Mila, who I adore, who you might have seen in some of my videos before. So I grew up in the city. I grew up in Boston with my family. My parents moved here from Greece. We never hunted as like a family. It was never something we talked about or like wanted to do. I wasn't against hunting, but I just really had no feelings about it growing up because it wasn't something that I thought about. So and another thing you might know about me, if you know a little about my background, is that I got into shooting through my oldest sister. So she took me to the range and she started teaching me how to shoot. So I always think it's kind of cool that a girl, like another girl taught me how to shoot and now I'm out here teaching other women all about firearms and stuff like that. The way I got into hunting was not through a woman, it was actually through my boyfriend, Mac. When he and I started dating, he started talking to me about how he hunts because he's been hunting his whole life like since he was a kid it's just always been a part of his life and i thought it was really interesting because i eat meat i'd go to the grocery store before and get my meat and i never really thought about where it came from so he started talking to me about hunting bow hunting in particular and i thought that that was really interesting because i'd done archery at like camp and stuff but never really got into like serious archery like i am now so i actually went with my other sister my middle sister Marianne, we went to a hunter safety course. So in Massachusetts where I live, Mass Wildlife puts on these free hunter education courses. So you can learn about hunting, you can learn about trapping and all this other stuff. So we took the basic like hunter education course together. You take a test at the end and if you pass, you can apply for hunting permits. And then after that, I decided to take a bow hunter education course because I knew that I was interested in bow hunting. So I think that was about four years ago. So my first experience with hunting actually came when I went to visit my oldest sister in Montana and she lives on a ranch and where she lived that time when I went to visit her they had a real big problem with prairie dogs and prairie dogs are these little animals that dig holes in the ground and these holes can actually cause injury to the cows and horses on the ranch because they step in them and they can break their leg and stuff. So prairie dogs are like a big pest in that area. So we went out with her rifle and we shot some prairie dogs. And I remember everything was going fine until I shot the seventh one that I shot. And for some reason I hit it and it did not go down. And then I hit it again and it still did not go down. And I just felt so bad. The third shot took it out and it was fine. That was my, my first real experience with hunting. I also went pheasant hunting with Mac. We took our shotguns and I didn't get anything that year. I took a shot at one but I missed. So when I first became interested in hunting, I was more interested in bow hunting than in gun hunting. I think that the main reason is because of the challenge. Like if you listen to Joe Rogan, I love his podcast, and he talks a lot about doing things that are difficult on purpose, like putting yourself through difficult situations and learning things that are hard because it challenges your brain and it's just good for your overall development. You have to be closer in general than you do with a gun because 
you can only shoot so far with your bow. There are a lot of times that I saw deer this year that I could have shot with a gun, but they were too far away for me to get with my bow. So there's an added challenge there that I think is really interesting. You need to prepare pretty much all year to be able to accurately shoot your bow during deer season. So it's a process that we start early. So I decided that I wanted to learn how to shoot a bow because I liked the idea that it was challenging. I also feel that as a hunter, I enjoy it when it's more primitive. To me, the most like basic way to hunt is with a bow and arrow, maybe even like a, a recurve or a long bow. Compounds are a great place to start. So that's where I wanted to start was with a compound bow. So when I took that basic hunter education course, they gave us this book called Beyond Fair Chase. And it's really short, but it's really interesting. And it talks all about fair chase, which is basically the idea that we as humans have certain advantages over other animals. And it talks about the way that you can hunt in a way that's fair. So there are things that we can obviously do to make us more successful at hunting, but these things might not be fair ethically. So it talks a lot about ethics and all that stuff. So this is a really good book if you want to read it. It's by Jim Posowitz. Posowitz? Possibly. It got me thinking a lot about the ethics of hunting, which is very important if you're going to become a hunter. I think that being an ethical hunter is one of the most important things you can learn how to do as a hunter. I have nothing against gun hunting, and I'm probably going to gun hunt this year during deer season. It's currently archery season where I live, so I'm hunting with my bow, but later on when it switches to gun season, I'm considering hunting with a gun. To me, a bow just feels more of a natural way to hunt versus a gun. And also I feel like for the deer, it's quieter. Like when you shoot an arrow, it's much quieter than shooting a gun. You don't have that loud boom that they hear when they get hit. Thinking about their experience as the one being shot and the one who's going to give its life so that you can sustain yourself, I just feel like it's more pleasant for them to not have that loud noise and to just feel the arrow hit them and then they just run. So the bow just feels like a less intrusive method than a gun. So when I decided I wanted to get into bow hunting, I went to a local archery shop and I asked a bunch of my Facebook friends where they would recommend and they recommended a shop called Reedy's. And Reedy's is an awesome bow shop. If you're in Massachusetts, it's a great place to go. So when I went there, I tried out a few different bows and then I ended up getting this one. <laughs> This is the Mission by Matthews Craze 2. And one of the reasons I really like this bow is because it was very adjustable. So as a beginner, I wanted it to be adjustable so that I could increase the draw weight on my bow as I got stronger. Because in Massachusetts, you have to be able to pull 40 pounds with your bow or more in order to hunt with it. So I think I started off at like 34. 30, maybe 32 pounds and now I'm up to 42. My goal is to get up to 50 so I'm working on that right now but right now I'm pulling 42 pounds with this bow and that's enough for the deer hunting that I'm doing right now. So this is my bow. I have a camera on here it's called a Tacticam so that I can film my shots which is really cool but Mac and I are actually looking to upgrade our bows this year so we'll continue to hunt with our current bows for the rest of this deer season and then once it's over we're gonna switch to new bows. so that's gonna be really exciting I can't wait to try like a higher end bow this is more of a beginner's bow and it works fine but I'm just really excited to try something that's a little better now that I know a little bit more about archery so the first year that I had my bow I went out with Mac but I was mostly a Observing. I would watch him hunt and he would teach me things and we'd just sit there and listen and watch the animals and I just learned a lot just from observing. And then the next year we'd go out together, I would take my bow. I don't think I had any shots at any animals that year. Last year was the first year that I actually went out alone. So I would walk out alone to the tree stand, climb up the tree stand alone, sit in the tree stand alone, hunt alone. And last year I did get a shot at a small buck, but unfortunately I wasn't able to recover him. And it was a big learning experience for me. I did a whole video on it talking about my feelings and what happened and all that. And I show you the shot. I'll link it up here if you guys want to see it. So I learned a lot from that. And one of the things I love about hunting is that every time you go out, you learn something new. And this year, again, I'm going out mostly alone. We have a couple places where we can hunt together. Either we have like stands right next to each other in trees that are close together, or we have one stand that's a double. But other than that, I'm usually alone. So we mostly hunt out of tree stands. So what are some of the challenges that I've faced? Losing my first deer obviously was a huge one. That was 
tough, but I learned a lot from it. Another thing is increasing my draw weight. Like I said, I want to get up to 50 pounds on my bow, so that's something that I'm working on. Another thing is just like which deer am I going to shoot and which am I not. Like when I'm up in the stand, I have a lot of thoughts going through my head. If I see a doe with her yearling i don't want to shoot that doe because i don't want to shoot a mom in front of her babies <laughs> even though they are self-sufficient by now it just still seems wrong to me as a woman and i don't want to do it i have these rules that i've made up for myself of what i will and won't do of course every situation is different every hunt is different and you don't know what's going to pop out in front of you but there are a lot of like ethical questions you ask yourself when you're up there and it's just really interesting another thing is the cold i do not like the cold i'm not a cold weather person i have greek blood running through my veins and it's warm in greece usually so that's also been a challenge i got new boots this year so i'm excited to try those out when it gets really cold and see how they do another thing that i really love for the cold is this thing right here you strap it around your waist and then you stick your hands in these little holes in the side and it keeps your hands nice and toasty. I like to stick these hot hands in there so it gets nice and warm and then you just stick your hands in while you're sitting in the stand. I also like that it just masks any movement in my hands and it has pockets so I can carry things. So this is my hunter safety system and it's been one of my favorite things that I've gotten. I'm in the house right now and the heat's on and my hands are still cold. That's just how I work. I need something to keep my hands warm and that's what I found to work best. One of the other challenges that I've had to overcome is walking through the woods in the dark, which is kind of scary. And I try not to watch any horror movies during these few months, like October through December, because I know that in the morning I'm gonna have to walk through the woods in the dark to get to my stand, because you want to get there before first light. You know, all those movies you watch, like the ring and stuff, start to pop in your head as you're walking through the woods by yourself, but you just have to like push them down push them down, just remind yourself that the sun's gonna come up. And it's definitely more scary for me walking in there, like at night, walking out of the woods than it is walking into the woods in the morning because I know the sun's gonna come up, but at night it's only gonna get darker. So that's like a psychological thing that I've learned to overcome. It's not as scary anymore. Another thing is getting into the tree stand because they're like 24 feet up in the tree. Um, we have lifelines and harnesses this year. I feel a lot more secure using the lifeline. When you climb up the tree, you hook onto it. So even if you fall off the ladder, you're still secured to the tree with the lifeline. And then once you get up there, you hook up the harness to your tree strap and you're hooked up to the tree. But then sometimes I'm like, what if the tree falls and I'm strapped to it? There's just these like little phobias, you know? But I'm not afraid of heights. If I was, it would be pretty impossible to, <laughs> to stay up there. Another thing is that when you're in the tree, and it gets a little windy, the trees move. Like you don't really notice it from the ground, but if you look up into the tops of the trees on a windy day, you can see that it's uh, a little scary. They're moving around a bunch. Another challenge I've had is my hair because we have to use like scent-free shampoo and conditioner. It's just like drying out my hair like crazy. And I've tried a couple different brands and I haven't found anything that I love yet. I tried Just For Doe's the last couple years. That was pretty good. Right now I'm trying free and clear, which is not so good. So it's just like my hair, I don't know what to do with it. I can't put mousse in it because it smells. So the hair has been a challenge. So what do I like about hunting? Why did I decide to hunt? Well, first off, until recently, human beings subsisted off hunting. Like it was something that was part of us. Just like the rest of nature hunts, so did human beings. And unfortunately now it's something that's not as common. And that's because, you know, there's so many of us, we need farming and factories and all this stuff to sustain everybody. But hunting has been a way of life for humans for a very long, long time. It's only recently that we've become detached from that part of ourselves, but I still feel like hunting taps into this like primitive part of my soul, like something that's deep in there that has been a part of us for forever. When you hunt, it puts you like right into that circle of life, you know, right into that cycle. You become a predator and you have prey and it, it just makes you feel more connected to nature and the animal world. It also makes me appreciate my meat in a way that doesn't happen when I buy it at the grocery store. So when I eat a burger that I got from the grocery store, I don't know that cow. Like I didn't see that cow walk around. I don't know what that cow was eating. I don't know where it was living, what kind of life it had. I know nothing about that cow. But when I eat a burger that's made from a deer that I have harvested, I remember that hunt. I remember the feeling that I had when I saw that deer run after I shot it. I remember what it was doing right before I shot it. I remember where it lived, what it ate, 
who it was running around with. Like there's just a deeper connection there from my experience. It helps me to appreciate that food more than meat that I buy at the grocery store. So in 1937, we created the Pittman-Robertson Act and that act basically puts a ton of money into conservation and whenever sportsmen and women spend money on hunting equipment, guns, bows, hunting clothing, permits, stamps, there's a special tax on that that goes towards conservation and towards wildlife management and stuff like that. Hunters are actually contributing to conservation and it's very scientific, you know, there are people whose job it is to do surveys on how many deer there are, what the populations are like, so that they know how many deer we're allowed to take that year. And if those populations grew too large and we didn't hunt, then there wouldn't be enough food for the deer, there would be more people hitting deer with their cars, and the populations wouldn't thrive. So hunters actually help to protect environments and wildlife populations. So I actually ended up harvesting my first deer on opening day of deer season this year. So almost exactly a month ago from when I'm filming this. I learned a lot from that experience and now every time I eat that meat I remember that day and that hunt. So we try to use up as much of the animal as we can. We keep the bones for bone broth and I give some to Mila. She's on like a raw food diet so she gets some of the meat. She gets a bunch of the organs and then we get meat for our freezer. I think that as human beings become more advanced we try to separate ourselves from the idea of death and the fact that death is actually what is sustaining us, especially if you're eating meat. Even if you're not, animals definitely die so that you can have your fruits and veggies, like their environments are destroyed so that we can farm. Death is a part of life and it's part of what sustains us. And I think that we try to like not think about it. And even when I shot my deer this year, at the beginning of the season, I cried. Like I cried the first time I saw Mac take a deer. Like when we found it, I started crying because it's just very emotional to know that this animal is no longer gonna be alive. But there's also this overwhelming like gratitude that I feel in my heart for that sacrifice and the fact that I can now use this meat to feed my family. Another thing is that nature is often very brutal and cruel. I used to watch those nature shows with my dad where the lion would eat the gazelle and it's part of nature. And I always felt weird that it bothered me so much because I know that the lion has to eat. I don't want the lion to starve, but I also don't want the gazelle to die. So it's this weird like push and pull between life and death. And it's just, it's a part of life. If I don't take that deer, then it could starve to death, it could freeze to death, it could get eaten by a pack of coyotes while it's alive, which is, in my opinion, much less pleasant than being hit by an arrow and then bleeding out and dying within seconds or minutes. It's just a part of life, you know, and it's something that I feel more closely connected to and more appreciative of since I became a hunter. So some goals that I have for this upcoming year and the future are to increase my draw weight to 50 pounds on my bow. I want to get a deer 100% on my own because I've assisted Mac in doing it, but he usually does most of the work and I like hold things and assist. And to harvest more deer. So I went out this morning and I saw one deer. I've been seeing a bunch in the woods where we hunt, so that's exciting. So hopefully I'll get at least one more this year. I'm hoping for at least two more this year, so we'll see. Another goal that I have is to eventually hunt with a recurve bow. So Mac and I both got recurve bows last year and I would just love to move to an even more primitive way of hunting. So a compound bow is great, but I want like a stick and a string, that's what I tell them. So we got recurve bows and we practiced with those a lot this year and they're so much fun, but I really need to get stronger so that I can pull 40 pounds or more with my recurve bow. So that's another goal that I have for the future. Probably not next year, but maybe within the next five or so years. We'll see, we'll see how I do. When I was little one day, I went to church with my parents, like we did every Sunday, and my mom likes to talk to people after church and I'm a little more introverted, so I was kind of done with the talking. So I went outside and I saw a squirrel. And I remember just sitting there outside in the church parking lot watching that squirrel like dig holes and find acorns and just do its squirrel thing for like 20 minutes. I remember thinking, is it weird that I'm enjoying this? Because I've always just loved like observing nature and watching animals. So when you're out there in a tree for hours and you have to sit still and you have to be quiet, you see a lot of things that you don't normally see. Like you see a fawn walking right underneath your tree stand and it doesn't even know you're there. Or you see squirrels playing around and jumping and running up the trees and they don't even know you're there. You hear birds.
you see a fissure. If you don't know what a fissure is, I'll put a video here so you can see what it is. You just really get to appreciate and enjoy God's creation from up close as an observer. And it's just kind of cool that the animals can do their own thing without knowing that you're there. Before I close this video, I just want to say thank you so much to my boyfriend, Mac. He's amazing. He's taught me everything I know about hunting. He's like been so patient with me. I mean, he's such a patient person anyway, but he's so patient with me and teaching me everything and showing me how to do things. And every time he learns something new, he'll share it with me so that we can improve together. So thank you so much for teaching me, babe. You're the best. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to know more about hunting and my experience, please let me know. Leave your questions below and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss my future videos. I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Bye.